Well, good evening, Father's Art. I'm so excited to be with you this uh, this evening. I trust that you're ready for an awesome, awesome, awesome uh, Sunday night's teaching. I trust that you've had a wonderful weekend. You are so blessed. You are so enthused. And you are ready to go and do what God has called you to do. So let's just pray together. Father, we thank you that you love us so much, that you care for us, Lord, that you're leading us, guiding us, directing us. And Lord, I thank you most of all that you are perfecting us. Lord, I thank you for your blessing and anointing. And Lord, I pray that we never going to be the same again in Jesus' name. Lord, I thank you that as we come around your word tonight, Father, I thank you that you're going to move by your spirit in each one of our lives. Lord, I just thank you that as we come into this time of worship right now, Lord, I thank you that we could just open our hearts and receive everything that you have for us in Jesus' mighty name. And everybody said, Amen and Amen. All right, we're going to go straight into worship. Over to you, John. Looks like tonight The sky is heavy Feels like the winds Are gonna change Beneath my feet The earth is ready And I know it's time For heaven's rain It's gonna rain Living water we desire to flood our hearts with holy fire. Rain down all around the world. We're singing rain down. Can you hear the earth is singing rain down? All around the people singing rain. heavy feels like it's time to dream again and I see the clouds and yes I'm ready to dance upon this barren land hopes in my head yeah yeah this is living
just want you Nothing else Nothing else Nothing else will do I just want you No, nothing else Nothing else, Jesus Nothing else will do I just want you us that you are moving by your spirit lord i just thank you right now that we could just come and celebrate your presence lord we worship you we lift up your name we magnify you and lord i thank you that you love us so much that you care for us and lord i pray right now that each and every one of us will experience you in the fullness of your power in jesus mighty name amen and amen well, I just want to welcome your family. I'm so excited. I tell you what, it's such a treat to move around the nation and just meet the family. Man, I tell you what, God has made some beautiful people. On South Afrikaners, on is prachtige mense. All right, I want to tell you that we are beautiful people. I love you. I love hanging out with you. And I'm telling you what, I will get this Afrikaans waxed as well. 
All right, so I just trust that you're ready for an awesome time tonight. We're going to deal with our offering teaching, and I want us to go to 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 11. I want to show you this. While you are enriched in everything for all liberty, which causes thanksgiving through us to God. Now, what does that mean? It means for those of us that have trusted God, that have believed God and said, God, I thank you for a breakthrough. That when the breakthrough comes, we are enriched. All right, we've got more than what we need. So that we are ready to be able for all liberty. In other words, we are ready to give. We are literally ready to do what God has called us to do. And as we come across a need that we're ready to give, ready to sow, why do we do that? So that we can become a channel. Saints, this is the secret. Let's believe God to be a channel. To keep giving. To keep giving so that you keep on giving. So that you can keep on receiving. So that you can keep on giving. I want to tell you right now, if we get this thing right, we are going to have the blessing of God upon us. We are never going to lack anything. We're going to have an abundance. And so the more you give, the more you're going to receive. That is a biblical principle. And so I want to just encourage you. Or I want to encourage you. Give. And then as you give, you are going to see how God is going to bless you. All right. So I want us to pray over those that have been trusting God, that have received, so that we can be enriched. And so that we are liberal, ready to go again. And what does it do? It causes us to have thanksgiving in my heart. Let me tell you something. I have got, in other words, when I was in need, people gave to us, helped us, carried us, whatever. But let me tell you something. It's much better to go and give than to receive. It is so much easier and nicer to go and see a family change because you've given something or helped somebody. So I want to just say, listen, guys. Let us give. Let us be ready to give. Let us be open to give. Let us just allow God to move in our lives so that we can be givers in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's pray together. Lord, I thank you right now that as we come together, Father, I pray that we will believe you. Lord, that we can sow and we can give and so that we can receive to give again. Father, I thank you that we can give you the thanksgiving. Lord, that every time we give, we see the principle in operation. We see the blessing in operation. Lord, I thank you right now for the blessing of God to flow, for the power of God to be seen in Jesus' mighty name. And everybody said, Amen and Amen. Well, saints, I trust that you are going to believe God, that you are going to give. And every time you give, you give in faith in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, I want to just, uh, I've got a request today. Okay, I don't often do this, but I have one today. All right, I need some guys to help me. All right, there's some people that we are trying to get together for this fire conference. Some of the young people come from very, very um, uh, difficult home situations and that they don't have the finance. I want to just ask you, just consider this. You don't have to, have to pray about it. Just think about this. Are you prepared to help me invest in somebody's life? All right, if you are able to help me with a thousand rand, just to help and sponsor somebody who can't make it, who can't afford it, or you know, some of the families that are really struggling and they've got to pay for like four or five people because they really want their lives impacted. If you want to help me, I want you just to get a hold of me. Just send me an, an email at uh, Believers at Father's Art. Believers at Father's Art, if you're able to help me to assist just to get some more um, young people, particularly that I'm targeting who really don't have finance, um, just to sponsor them, okay? Uh, I want to just let you know that from our side, I'm also sponsoring a lot of people, but I really do believe that we as the body of Christ, this is an investment for somebody's life to be changed, okay? So just consider that, think about it. If you really are able and have the means, you want to help me, just uh, send me that email with your details, and then what we'll try and do even as far as possible is someone give you the, the person that you're sponsoring's details. So you register it as if you're going to the camp but with their details. You just pay for it. They will get the email. And so I'll try and get it that way around. Okay. Just so that you have a direct thing. You know who you're sponsored. And just know that if you ever hear that name again in the future and stuff's happening, you go, hey, I was part of that guy's foundation. All right. So I just want to bless you on and just say thanks very much, saints, for standing together. And we are trusting God for some awesome things on these camps. Amen. 
While I'm on the camp, I might as well just throw this thing in. All right, we've just been notified that um, the Pretoria camp, I know that the Buddha and the guys, they love their camping, their tents and their caravans and all the all right, I just want to let you know, we don't have this in Marshall Bay. We don't have campsites with electricity, but we have it in Pretoria. So if you go, so this is how it works. You book yourself a thousand rand for a spot. So you can choose either I stay in the dorms or I can stay somewhere else out, outside. Or I can bring my caravan that's on the river, has electricity, beautiful ablution blocks. So you can choose whichever way you want, but it still costs you a thousand rand because we are charged per head for the site, okay, uh, for the, the the conference. We charge per head. So whether you use a bed, whether you use a caravan, a tent, uh, whether you sleep off-site, there's no day fees. So everybody pays a thousand rand for the weekend. It's simple. It is plain, and we're all doing it. I'm paying it. My family's paying it. Everybody's paying it, okay? I'm not using your money to pay for me, okay? <laughs> everybody's paying a thousand rand across the board. It includes eight meals, whether you eat or not. Okay, if you have special dietary needs, bring your own dietary needs, but you're still paying the thousand rand for the weekend. Okay, right, let's get on to um, our teaching today, and then I'll deal with some of the things that I want to deal with. This evening, I want to deal with a topic entitled decreeing, decreeing. I want to just say something that we're going into a season of decreeing. All right, I believe with all my heart that as we come into the season and the Spirit of God is busy moving on the body of Christ, excuse me, I believe that it's time for us to decree. Now, decreeing is not positive confession. It is actually standing and decreeing by the power of God what needs to change, how it changes. And I'm going to show you what it means. Decreeing actually as more of a negative thing with it. What do I mean by that? It means to cut off. Let's go and have a look at what the dictionary says about it. Decreeing means the following. I'm talking about the biblical definition of decreeing. It means to cut in two, to divide. All right? To cut down, to cut off, to destroy, to exterminate. To decree means to separate or to be excluded. It means to destroy. All right? To be decreed. Now, what on earth are we talking about when we say that we need to come into a season of the green things in the body of Christ? Well, I want to tell you right now that we need to cut off, destroy, remove anything that is not godly. Okay, so whenever you see something that is ungodly, then we need to decree over it. So in other words, if they say COVID uh, spike. We go, we decree life. What are we doing? We are cutting off. We are dividing in two. We are reversing what we see. So whenever you see a decree, it's not a positive confession. It is us reversing what we physically see in front of us. So when we speak about a biblical decree, we are talking about reversing the natural that you are seeing into a biblical alignment so that it changes the physical face of it so if you don't like something decree life over it decree a change over it so let's take examples your marriage is a mess you don't sit down and say that your partner's a mess and this is a struggle and I wish that I married somebody else. You sit down and say, I decree life over this thing. I decree blessing over this thing. I speak God's anointing over this thing. I speak unity. I speak love over this thing. So as you start doing it, what are you doing? You are decreeing against the fact. You are decreeing this thing and saying, I'm separating this thing. I'm reversing the negative and I'm bringing in the positive. Now, this is very important because God is calling us into a positive decree over our lives. See, a lot of us are still believing a lie. A lot of us are experiencing what the devil wants us to experience. That's not what God has for you. That is not what God's plan is for your life. And so we need to start reversing some of these things in Jesus' name. I am not going to settle for second best anymore in my life. All right. I am going to believe God for the supernatural, for the divine encounters, and for God to do something miraculous in my life. Okay. So I want us to go to Job chapter 22, 28. And it says this. Thou shalt also decree a thing, and it shall be established unto thee 
in the, and the light shall shine upon your ways. It is a prophecy. I want you to see, this is Job out of everybody, okay? This guy had a mess of a life. He had lost his kids. He had lost his wealth. He had done everything. I mean, he wanted to, he got so bad that even his own wife said, rather kill yourself. Okay? And so ultimately, this guy picked up from nowhere. If you talk about the low of the low of the low, and his trial lasted nine months. And he had gone through so much. Then he gets this promise. Decree and whatever you decree, it's going to happen. In other words, whatever you say against your circumstance, which is probably one of the worst circumstances that any physical human being could have been in. All right, I've been through rough times. I have lost things. But let me tell you something. I did not lose everything plus my family. Okay, so I want to tell you right now. Yeah, Job comes in the worst of the worst situations and he gets this word of encouragement. Decree whatever you want and it will be established. In other words, turn this thing around and it's going to be done for you. Separate the physical from what the truth is. Now, what is the truth? God's word. God's promise. God's creative power, the Holy Spirit that works with God. And so that is the truth. And if we go and start decreeing things over our lives, we are going to start reversing what the devil has placed over our lives. And so we as believers need to understand when we go against something, when I sit down and say, I declare COVID null and void, I'm not denying that COVID exists. I'm saying I'm changing those stats. In the name of Jesus, those stats are going to come down. And in the name of Jesus, we are not going to have a fourth wave. Now, what am I doing? I am decreeing against the facts and the data that has been come. Now, you must understand, this is where we start talking fact against truth. Fact of the thing was that many people in the Bible had been dead. The truth of it, Jesus Christ comes, this child's not dead. She's, she's asleep, raises her from the dead. Jesus Christ goes past the funeral, raises the guy off the, off the bed. So what is happening? The fact is they are dead. The truth is God's power is greater. The truth is we can turn COVID around in our nation. We can turn the, uh, the state of our nation around when we decree and release life over it in Jesus' name. Now, is that the fact that I'm seeing right now? Not necessarily. But it does not mean that that's not what's going to end up with. It means that that's the fact right now. We are going to take this thing. We are going to oppose this thing. We are not going to just, it's not positive speaking now. I am separating a death sentence to a positive life sentence. And I'm turning it around and saying what was stone and plan and purpose to bring death is now going to bring life. What I like about this uh, prophecy that Job had, listen to the second part. It says, Thou shalt also decree a thing and it shall be established unto you. Listen to this. And the light shall shine upon your ways. What is so important about the light? That's a scripture that comes in the New Testament. All right. The light shall light your path. Now, what does it mean? It shows me where to go. I will know what to do. I will know what God's plan is. I will know what God's provision is. I'll know what God's destiny is for me. So I need you to understand that when we decree something, we are reversing what we see before us. If there's something which we don't like, we will decree it differently. Now, what I want to do right now, and I'm just going to list a few examples for you. Okay, but before I do that, I want us to go to Matthew chapter 21, 22. Matthew 21, verse 22, it says this. Whatever things you ask in prayer, believing, you will receive. Whatever it is that you are believing God for, you will receive, even if the facts say contrary. You can turn around the facts by the truth. If you have the truth operating, you can turn around any fact. And that fact will have to come in line with the word of God because you have released the truth of God over it. And so, saints, I want you to get excited about this. I want you to get blessed by this. Because we are going to see the power of God move like never before. All right? Because we are going to start decreeing over our nation. Our municipality is a wonderful municipality. 
Our, one of, our municipality is free of corruption. Our municipality has, has people that are operating on godly principles, on righteous, uh, righteous acts. They are going to do the right thing. What am I doing? I'm reversing what I'm seeing. I'm decreeing something. I'm cutting it off. I'm turning it around. It's not going to stay that way in Jesus' name. That is what we do when we use the word decree. Now, there are some declarations that we need that we can use as decrees. In other words, we have something that we might know we might have an issue in our life. So you go find a scripture to reverse that thing and decree it over your life. I'll give you 10 examples. And I, there's lots. Okay, there's lots. The whole Bible's full of them. I could be here the whole week of Sundays. But listen carefully. When I go through this, if you have anything that's contrary to this, here's a scripture for you to decree over your life and turn it right. Why is it going to be so powerful? Because it's the word of God. So whatever you see that's not right, find a scripture and start releasing it. And so I decree that thing changed. It's not going to be my, my end of day. This is not going to happen in my family. I'm going to decree this thing gone in Jesus' name. We have had to do that so many times. People have spoken so many negative words over us. Every single night we go to bed, we say we cut off every demonic word, assignment, concentration, thought that has been placed against our family. We cut it off in Jesus' name. You must understand, the more you get into the limelight of the public, everybody's got an opinion. Everybody says what they think about you. Every night I cut that thing off. Why? I'm decreeing life over my life. I'm decreeing life and blessing over my family. If I've got anything that, that I need fixing, the Holy Spirit will help me and my leaders will be around me to correct me. I'm not saying I'm unteachable, but I'm not going to be affected by everybody's opinion. Nor should you. So as I go through these 10, I want you to determine in your heart if this has anything to do with you. Number one. I am blessed with every spiritual blessing in heavenly places in Christ. Ephesians 1.3. In other words, if you are not blessed right now, you don't feel blessed. You don't feel like you deserve to be blessed. Here's the scripture. Decree it. Turn that thing around. I'm chosen in Christ before the foundation of the world that I might be holy and blameless before, uh, before the Father. Ephesians 1.4. I am predestined to adoption as a daughter by the Father through Christ Jesus according to the good pleasure of His will. Ephesians 1.5 The Father has accepted me in the Beloved. Ephesians 1.6 I, I have redemption through Christ Jesus' His blood and forgiveness of sins. Ephesians 1.7 and Colossians 1.14 I have obtained an inheritance in Christ. Ephesians 1.11 I'm just giving you a whole lot. I'm sealed with the Holy Spirit, who is the guarantee of my inheritance. Ephesians 1, 13 and 14. God raised me up in heavenly places to sit with him with Christ Jesus. Um, in Ephesians 2, 6. I'm saved by grace through faith. I'm not saved by my own works. Ephesians 2, 8 and 9. All right, I'm God's masterpiece. Uh, he created me anew in Christ. So that I can do all things that he planned for me many a long time ago, many years ago. Ephesians 2.10. Alright, there's just a few there that I took out of Ephesians. But now listen. I want to tell you right now that this is how it works. You have got to stop decreeing things. So if there's crime in your area, decree peace. And it's not positive thinking. It is declaring what Christ's word says. You shall live in peaceable habitation. If your habitation is not peace, declare it. And say, so that's it. And when I declare it, I'm shifting what the current situation is like. So I want us all to pray right now. Lord, right now in the mighty name of Jesus, we thank you. That as we go and we have our declarations and we declare that you are good. Lord, I thank you right now that the facts around us might not do that. But in Jesus name, we are not going to settle for the facts. We are going to bring the truth and we are going to bring liberty to each and every one of us. In Jesus mighty name. Father, we thank you for your anointing. We thank you for your calling. We thank you for your blessing. Lord, I thank you right now that you love us so much. That each and every one of us will not be the same again in the mighty name of Jesus. And we will do what you have called us to do. And we are going to move with power. We are going to move with might. And we are going to see the blessing and the power and the fire of God move ahead of us in Jesus' mighty name. And everybody said, Amen and Amen.
Well, folks, I can't tell you how excited I get when it comes to the declaring and fighting off and changing and flipping what the devil has. Every time the devil has a plan, God turns it around for the good for the saints. That is what we are here for. So I want to encourage you, step into the arena, get in there and go and decree what you want in your life in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, let's deal with some family issues. All right, what does that mean? All right, as fathers out, I want to just check with you quickly. Firstly, I want to just say this. If you don't have a local church, all right, I'm not telling you to leave your church if you don't have one, or if you're really, really unhappy with your local church, all right, leave before you say something ugly. Do not pick up a fence. Do not go and destroy the body. Do not get a whole lot of people to back you and cause division in that local church. I've done it myself. I've caused issues. And I'll tell you what, it does not benefit anybody. This is what you do. If you are so unhappy with your local church, leave. Now, I'm speaking to those who don't have a church. You don't know where you're connected. I want you to consider joining Father's Art Digital Church. Now, why is it important to belong to a local body? The Bible is very clear that he only God only moves through the local body. He has assigned leadership in a local body. They carry a responsibility, but this is the big one. They carry a covering for you so that you can grow up. They take a lock of the flak and the attack so that you can grow up. And so that's very important because it helps you grow faster. And so firstly, I want to just say that if you are not part of a local body, you need to find one. If you don't have one, be part of Fathers Art Digital Church. We are scattered all over the nation. We've got members literally all over the nation. And our function and idea is to create a spiritual umbrella for our nation. We're going to teach our people how to pray and how to stand in the gap. We are getting there. We are slowly but surely on a plan to raise the spiritual standard within the next four years. Now, I'm going to ask you, if you'd like to join Father's Art Digital Church, please go to fathersart.co.za and go and apply for membership. The minute you apply for membership, we take it as serious as anything and we immediately start taking the responsibility for you immediately. All right. So I just want to bless you with that. And I want to say, saints, those that are part of Father's Art, I want you to know that we are praying for you. All right. We take this very seriously. And I want to just encourage every Father's Art member, please get connected to a small group. You have to be connected somewhere so that you can grow. All right, we are slowly but surely trying to get the, the guys who have asked. But if you haven't requested yet, please go to believers at fathersart.co.za and please let us know that you want to be part of a small group so that we can then put you together in the areas. All right, we're not allowed to just, uh, with this new Poppy Act and, and privacy, privacy of information, we can't just make it national. So we can't just broadcast it. We need you to do it from your side. We then put you together with the locust, local area and we are busy with this. All right. We are busy planting uh, fellowship groups every single week. My goal is to have more than a thousand scattered across this nation so that we can start creating this umbrella. It's very important that you connect it. So I'm going to ask you please to be part of this. Okay. So I want you to get connected. Make sure that you are connected to this in Jesus name. And then also I wanted to say, that um, we are going to be coming um, to Van Bale Park and to Potch soon. So get ready for that. We're going to be hitting your area. All right, we've got two sessions in Van Bale and one in Potch. Okay, so please get ready. We are going to be hitting that in November. So we're going to have that up very soon as well for the booking for that so, so that we have the numbers. So I want to bless you and I want to say go and have a wonderful, wonderful week ahead. All right, just know that from my side, mine and Janine's side and the leaders, let me tell you something. We are praying for you. We are seeking God. We are trusting God that God will bless every individual who is connected to Father's heart. I want to bless you. I want to commend you for standing with and raising the banner and just being part of this because I know that God has got a major, major thing in store. It is coming, folks. It is coming. There's some very big things coming our way. All right. So God bless you. Have a wonderful week and we will chat soon. Remember that I'm right back tomorrow morning, 9 a.m. with communion. God bless you. Enjoy your evening. Rest well. Amen.